So here in my Kali Linux, I am running two terminals side by side. In one terminal, I am going to run one Python file. It has codes for a simple Python C2 server. In the other terminal, I have another Python file, which contains codes for the client. Now consider this terminal where the server is running as an attacker machine, a hacker who has just started his C2 server in his machine, and on the other hand, it's you. You're a script kitty who has been social engineered by that hacker. He has told you to run this file using the following command. You run it, and the hacker got the connection. You shared this file with your friends, and they ran it in their terminals as well, and now all three of them are controlled by the attacker. The attacker now has access to the computers of all three of you. He can interact with any computer he wants, get a shell inside of it, and do whatever he wants. He can also run a single command on the devices using the broadcast feature he has added into his C2 server. Today we're going to have a look at both Python files and we are going to read out the codes for both server and client to see how it works. You've already seen how dangerous it could be. Before I dive deep into the codes, subscribe to the channel and like this video because I often put content like this on my channel. If I tell you a bit about C2 servers, these are also called command and control servers. We can handle multiple clients at the same time, which are usually called bots. We're going to make a simple version of it today, just to showcase how it works. In real life, it is used by evil hackers to access multiple devices at the same time and steal data from them. For editing codes, I prefer Sublime Text Editor, and here you can see my codes. First, we're going to understand the server codes. So, as we start our every Python code, we first import modules. Modules are like some other Python files inside of your computer that allow us to perform a specific function. Let's understand this by having a look at our modules. We've imported modules like socket, threading, subprocess, sys, and time. In Python, we use the import keyword to import modules. So our socket module is used for making connections between our server and clients. It is the core module of our server. The threading module is used for managing multiple clients. As discussed earlier, it is the core feature of every C2 server. The subprocess module is used to run system commands. We'll use it to get shell access inside our clients. Next, we've the SIS module. In this specific program, we're using it for exiting the program. And finally, we've the time module for optional sleep and time-based functions. Next on, we declare some global variables. These variables can be used by every function in here. Our first variable is a dictionary. Dictionaries are quite different from lists and tuples in Python. They allow us to fetch the data using values and keys. We can use a key to get its corresponding value. Next, we've the client ID variable, which is set to zero. It'll help us set a unique ID for each client connection. Next variable is a bit interesting. It creates a lock object. Think of it as a door that only one thread can pass through at a time. We need it because when we've multiple threads like we've in our C2 server, they may try to change shared data at the same time. 
which can cause data corruption or weird bugs. I'll explain it in more detail in a while. After these variables our functions start, we've the handle client function, which is obviously going to handle client connections for us. I'll not go into very deep detail because it'll make the video so long, but let me tell you the basic stuff this function is doing for us. So what this function does is that it listens for connections from clients and saves them in that client's dictionary we created above. It also does the error management, as you can see that it'll show an error when a client is unable to connect. And when a client loses the connection, it will also tell us that the specific client has been disconnected. Our next function is broadcast command. As you can guess from the name, this function will take a command from us and will execute it on all of the connected devices, doesn't matter how many, and then will show us the output. Next function allows us to send a specific command to a specific client. For example, if we don't want to send our command to all of the connected devices, we can interact with only one client and run commands on it. We also have list sessions function, which will list down all the clients for us when ran in the script. The next important function we've here is server shell. It provides us with an interactive shell to interact with our clients. We specify some commands here and utilize our already made functions. For example, you can see if the command is sessions, it will execute the list sessions function, which will list down all the sessions. We've interact, which takes one argument, like the session ID for the client to interact with. I've also specified background command in this, so that we can background our sessions we're connected to whenever we want and interact with another session. In the end, we also specify some usage for our C2 server. I've added some basic features, but if this video gets a good response, I'll add more in it. Lastly, we've our main function, the actual place of execution. You can see we customize a port here, set a specific IP address. We also use the threading module here to run all this C2 server in the background using this daemon equals true parameter in our function. In the end, we use our accept statement to quit the program with a warning if it would expect any keyboard interrupt. If we have a look at our client file, it has nothing very special except one thing, which is this demonize function. We created a process in our Linux system which keeps this Python file alive and keeps it connected to our C2 server. The next function we've is the core function of our C2 server, connect to server which makes a connection to our C2 server. We need to edit this file by changing our IP address here. You need to change the port as well if you've customized it in your server. Make sure both are the same, otherwise it'll not work. If you'd carefully look at this line, it shows a statement that it is connected to the C2 server. We can actually remove this for more stealth, but as this video is for educational purposes only, I'll keep it there. Also, this script will check if it is connected to the server. If not, it will try to reconnect after every five seconds and keep on trying until it connects. Okay, now let me show you this thing in action. I ran the server file in my terminal. Now you see it's listening for connections 
and let me open up a terminal and execute the client file multiple times so we get multiple connections on our server side. You see, we've got different connections in our server. They're all from the same machine, but it doesn't matter because we're doing this for educational purposes. So on our server side, we can type sessions and it'll list all sessions for us. Each session has its ID. Another thing I could do to improve this thing is to add some basic information about the client, like hostname and username. That'd definitely be better. So now, if I want to interact with any session, what I can do is type interact and then the ID of that specific client. And now you see I am inside of that specific client. I can type any command here and it will get executed on that machine. When done, I can just type background and now I am back in the C2 shell. Now I can use the interact command again to interact with other sessions. These are very basic features a simple C2 can have, but it can be upgraded. For example, I can add more different features inside it like file upload, file download and many other things you can imagine. Another cool feature about this C2 server is broadcast. We can use broadcast followed by a command to run a specific command on all the clients connected. Without connecting to each client one by one, we can use this broadcast command to run a single command on all. By the way, this right now is only usable for your local host, but if this video gets a good response, I'll make changes inside of it, so you could use it all over the internet. If you found this video helpful, and if it actually taught you anything, Consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video because I often put content like this on my channel.